What's up, YouTube? Let's watch a death battle. Beast versus Goliath. I want to apologize for not having very many videos lately. And if you hear a bird chirping, that's my Conyer. He's a, she's playing with the dingly ball. That's the bell noise right here. Uh, so if you hear noises, please don't get distracted. Besides, you'll probably hear the noise of the video anyways. Anyways, I haven't uploaded videos recently because the May sickness has hit me pretty hard. I just don't have any motivation other than whenever there's new tech and news, of course. But... Whatever, let's get started with this death battle. Beast versus Goliath. I'm cheering for Goliath, but I think Beast is going to win solely based on Marvel's win-loss record. So, here we go. Three, two, one. Now! Alright, let me turn it up a little. There we go. Some of the greatest heroes of all are shunned by the very people they continue to protect. Basically the worst deal ever. Like Beast, the blue genius of the X-Men. And Goliath, the gargoyle who gives new meaning to the phrase, tough as stone. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to, to find, find out, out who, who would win, win a death, death battle. battle. Who are going first? Mutation. Beast the first. The key to evolution. The process Beast. is slow, normally taking thousands of years. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. If that means we're all eventually gonna transform into blue hairy monkey men, count me out. Feared by I wanna be a blue hairy monkey man, that'd be cool. ...to show signs of their uniqueness around puberty. Not so for Hank McCoy. Yeah, the instant he popped out, it was pretty clear that something was different about him. Namely, the giant monkey hands and feet. <laughs> that must have been rough on the way out. He better give dear old mom double the presents on Mother's Day. <laughs> Though Hank successfully hid his mutation from the world throughout his... I actually didn't life, catch the previews for this one, so I don't know anything shine. about Beast. I do know a bit about um, Goliath, though. kicked out of his own school, he was left to wallow in loneliness. Until good old Wheels showed up and offered him a place on the mutant group known as the X-Men. Hank took on the nickname that was previously used to degrade him and transformed it into something new. His code name, The Beast. He has some cool As glasses. Man, Beast became an integral Bird. member of this uncanny Shush. team. His superhuman strength, speed, and durability let him go toe to toe with baddies like the immovable Blob and Craven the Hunter. But Beast was a genius, like yours truly, and quickly completed his doctoral studies. Eventually leaving the X-Men, he became a leading researcher in mutant genetics. Desperate to cure the mutant phenomenon, Beast developed a serum which he theorized would temporarily counteract the mutated genes in his body. Except it kind of did the opposite. Oh dear. Poor guy. Now he truly was a beast. This transformation wasn't all bad though. Fuzzy Beast could now lift over 10 tons, <laughs> run over 40 miles per hour, and jump over 25 feet in the air. He also had a wicked healing factor which made him essentially bulletproof. But Does everyone in the X-Men have a healing factor? I don't know, I'm not a big X-Men fan. A couple of hours when Quasimodo's experiments turned him blue. For a scientific genius, he never did quite figure out how to turn back to his old self. I mean, he's been able to turn into a cat man, a horse man, blue Kelsey Grammer, and even Sasquatch. Somehow, he always ends up as his classic blue ape self. Now unable to hide in plain sight, Beast had little choice but to return to the X-Men as a teacher and a leader. As my research makes evident, it is possible to enhance the intelligence of Molluscus cephalopoda, such as the squid, to the same level as that of the average human. Even a little above average. I'm afraid I must leave her, hmm. so I'll hand you over to my new teaching assistant, Mr. Cephalopod. Honestly, when I look at him, I just don't picture him as a smart guy. But he's apparently a genius. My bird is flapping its wings. I don't know if the microphone's picking that up, but if it is, I apologize. Hits from the juggernaut, smashed open a tank with his bare fists, hit the ground with a punch so hard he created an earth-shattering shockwave, and lifted nice. a solid gold oak tree. A cubic foot of gold weighs approximately one ton. Comparing the diameter of the tree to Hank's height, it's reasonable to believe that this golden tree weighs at least 60 tons. Mm. Or a ship ton, to be precise. <laughs> Despite his athletic skill and enormous strength, Beast is a pacifist, preferring diplomacy over fisticuffs. He is rarely eager to enter a fight. In combat, he usually relies on his teammates to throw punches while he holds back to come up with game-winning strategies using his brilliant mind. Like the time he figured out how to use Juggernaut's own bulk against him. 
As Archimedes said when he discovered the principle of displacement, Eureka. But when he gets angry, he'll enter a rage which makes him so uncontrollable. Alright, that's the rage fierce. I was looking for. He's a danger even to his closest friends. Literally unleashing the beast within. I was like, there we go. His monstrous appearance remained a permanent part of his life. He was never truly accepted by society, and even had to leave the woman he loved for fear she would become a target of mutant haters. But if he could have his way, he would spend his days hanging from the ceiling with a nice cup of tea reading Shakespeare. <laughs> But we don't always get what we want, so he'll have to settle for kicking ass. With faint heart, averted feet, and many a tear, in our opposed path to persevere. A minor poet for a minor obstacle. All right, Goliath. One thousand years ago, superstition and the sword ruled. Goliath. It was a time of darkness. It was a world of fear. It was the age of gargoyles. And badass cartoon intros. Stone by day. Yeah, that intro is so nights, good. Gargoyles used to be common throughout the world. Like the stone statues they inspired, gargoyles were. I've seen most of the show. I saw most of the show when I was young. Side was always their top Bird, priority. please. It's not every day. I saw most of the show. When is also your Bird. Build bodyguard. I saw most of the show when I was younger, but I haven't seen it since then. So I. Please. Relationship with the humans of a I haven't seen castle. it since then, so I don't remember much from it. Spirit, I'm so sorry. Defended the castle from invaders Bird. In return, their human allies would watch over them during the day Shush. they are most vulnerable, as gargoyles turn to solid stone in daylight. The gargoyles were led by Goliath, a creature with a voice uh, so sexy and makes humans turn to stone, if you know what I'm saying. You are trespassing. Do not trespass. Unfortunately, Lily, please. Appearance, Goliath's clan eventually faced unjust prejudice from the very humans under their protection. Ugh. We are most seriously displeased to allow beasts in the dining hall. These are unnatural creatures. No good You're unnatural. associating with them. If that wasn't bad enough, Goliath was betrayed by his closest human friend, causing nearly his entire clan to be smashed to bits. Then the few that did survive were magically sealed in stone forever by a misinformed wizard. Talk about a shitty Monday. Sealed Oy. in stone forever, or until one very specific, seemingly impossible criteria was met. When the castle reaches above the, the clouds. That they would sleep until the right. castle rises above the clouds. Yep. And when he says above the clouds, he means it literally. So, stone they remain for a thousand years until in 1994. Some billionaire with a name that sounds like an antidepressant just happened to be crazy enough to try something. Xanatos moved every last stone of the ancient castle to the top of his New York skyscraper, <laughs> which happened to poke above the clouds. The cost of which must have been astronomical. Don't disappoint me. I wonder how expensive that really would be. I've been right in predicting every death battle so far, so if Goliath wins, then woo! Because I predict, I predicted Toph. I predicted Guts. And I predicted Iron Man. Leading his clan into the so let's see if this works. Despite being completely out of his element, Goliath adapted surprisingly fast. You mean he was texting and watching cat videos and no And I never did get to do a reaction of Chuck Norris versus Sega oh, Sanchiro so because of technical difficulties. Again, I apologize for that. I'm sorry, but that's just the greatest thing. Turns out Goliath was naturally suited to traverse the broad expanse of the city with his enormous wings. Though to be clear, Goliath insists that he can't fly, only glide on the wind. Which I insist is bullshit. What else would you call what's happening right here other than friggin' flying? Yep. <laughs> Regardless of wind direction and speed, it seems Goliath has no trouble gliding wherever he wants to go. He only has issue taking off from the ground requiring an elevated point to start from. 
Good thing you can scale giant skyscrapers from ground level without breaking a sweat. Goliath is strong enough to lift a car, create a small earthquake, and tear through steel with his bare claws like it was wet paper. He's fast enough to keep pace with foes who use rocket-powered flight, and he's tough enough to survive a fall over 100 feet. He was even able to keep gliding after being shot by a Nazi gliding. while fighting in World War II. He traveled through time. It was weird. Goliath may look like a brutal monster, and he certainly can be when he goes into a rage. However, he's actually rather clever and wise. He was able to outsmart Oberon, who is practically an all-powerful magical god. And when Goliath's not leading his clan into battle or struggling to have a relationship with a human detective... Boundaries! He's usually holed up in his castle's library, reading. Wise and powerful, Goliath is a true force of nature. For 12 hours of the day. Right, the other 12, he's a motionless stone statue, making him a pretty easy target. Even when he's awake, Goliath often uh, that's probably gonna be it. For the sake of They're others. probably gonna be fighting until the sun comes up and hey, then he's, he's gonna lose. For over a I'm calling it. Me when I say, oh, but I want him to win, so I'm betting on Goliath. Come on. My name is Goliath, and I belong to no one. Stop. All right, Whining. Goliath's gonna win. I'm saying it. Whine. I'm saying it. He it's probably a brain dead mistake because he turns to stone in the morning, and Marvel's win record is insane. But I have to go with Goliath. It's time for a death battle. Lily, please. There's Beast. How's this fight gonna start? Oh, obviously him not turning into stone. Turning un stone. Whatever. So cool. Those are some nice sprites. Fight! Come on, Goliath! Come on. Is this gonna be the first one I'm wrong with? Lily! Bird! Ooh! Man! This is some crazy aerial battles here. That can't be it. That's too early. That's way too early. Whoa. That was way too early. But I was right! Look at that! Beast was always more of a team player, preferring not to fight directly unless absolutely necessary. And since oh, Goliath yeah. spent decades defending his ancient castle in New York from Vikings, thugs, magic beings, and ghosts, his combat experience trumped Beast's. Also, be careful not to misinterpret Beast's golden tree feat. While it might sound far more impressive than anything Goliath has done, Beast did not actually lift the whole 60 plus ton tree off the ground. It's nothing surpassing his usual feats. Hey, mm. one time Goliath got nailed in the back by an anti-aircraft round. That's right! Goliath got shot by a gun designed to destroy airplanes, got back up and dropped a radio tower on the fools that tried it. <laughs> he just didn't wait until sunrise for an advantage for two reasons. One, he didn't know what would happen because gargoyles in his universe don't share the stone by day rule. And mm. second, Beast isn't tough enough to stand against Goliath for 12 hours straight. Finally, Beast has fought somebody similar to Goliath named the Griffin, and only survived the fight due to his fellow X-Men Angel's help. In the end, Beast just didn't have the heart to keep up with the gargoyle. The winner is Goliath. All right, who's next? Please, someone I know really well. Next time on Come on. Battle. I always get so hyped for these. Snake! 
or Raiden? Oh, yep, it's Snake! Who's he up against? Who's he up against? Come on, come on. Colonel, he's hopping into action. He is Solid Snake. It's showtime. Versus who? Hey guys, thanks for watching. Versus who? I play Wiz. And I'm Chad and I play Boomstick. And, uh, <laughs> we've had snake requests. This is unacceptable. For years, and actually a few different possible matchups. Mm -hmm. But if you guys want to see who he's fighting, make sure you go follow us on our social media. Does that at ScrewAttack on Twitter or Facebook.com right. forward slash official essay? See you guys. We'll his combatant very soon. But in the meantime, be sure to check out the latest Game Overthinker 